folks here rachna ranade here and i welcome you all to another interesting live stream which is going to be on kims or dodla which one is a better choice uh, whether from long term perspective short term perspective listing gains whatever i'm going to talk about my own uh, analysis about these two stocks right so let's start uh, today the target that i'm setting for myself is that we should try and finish both these reviews in like 20 minutes we'll try to do that okay so uh, let's see if we are able to do it uh, first of all we are going to start off with is a start karenge we'll start with uh, dodla okay so like i've done for sona comstar and uh, sham metallics this is what i've done for dodla as well as for kims but then last time someone said that ma'am also do some kind of um ppt as well we are missing your ppts and all that so chalo i have done one or two small small presentations if need be if required i will open that okay so without wasting for the time let's start right away uh, first we are going to kick start with what we are going to start off with dodla okay so from beginning let me share my screen share Right. Okay, so here we are starting with Dodla. Some basic points. Uh, I will be uh, sharing my screen. Uh, incorporated in 1995, commenced production in 97. Basic, basic things. Very important. It's a South India-based uh, company, uh, mainly into processing, distribution, and marketing of milk and other dairy products. Uh, dairy products uh, like, usme kya kya aata hai? To milk, uh, toned milk, double toned milk. Uh, dairy products like curd butter ghee ice cream flavored milk i can also remember that marathi song the hid the loni gagar it's from natran movie okay uh, they also have uh, their major presence in telangana andhra pradesh uh, karnataka tamil nadu maharashtra and it mainly serves countries uh, uh, other than india like uganda and kenya okay 13 processing plants 336 distribution agents uh, all in all good distribution network uh, two important points placed here number one it's the third highest in terms of milk procurement uh, this is amongst private dairy players though okay so if i'm talking about milk procurement uh, they have the uh, third highest uh, mlpd is what they call call it million liters of raw milk per day okay third highest amongst what private dairy and if i'm talking about uh, uh, the market presence across india this is second highest uh, for presence across india but again amongst private dairy okay but in the rhp itself it's very clearly given that they have a significant presence in southern region of india though. okay so i hope you have understood the business main business of the company dairy dairy products south india may a uh, main presence third highest in milk procurement second highest in market presence both i'm talking about only private players okay then coming to financial summary okay very important point coming up super important point coming up so please pay 100% per attention If you see uh, last three years, uh, 18, 19, 20, if I'm comparing, revenue has grown at a decent enough 16% CAGR. PAT has uh, grown at a negative growth rate of minus 6.3%. If you can see, it was 568.5 uh, million, then 627, and down to 498. But some people might be like, "Or if from 498 millions, this is full year, huh? 498 millions is full year, entire year 2020." But then if I compare it with September. Uh, 30th 2020 which is the half year ended september their pat is 747 millions okay wow so if you can see full year ka jitna profit hai whatever is the profit for full year that has already been surpassed in the first 6 months of 2020 but if you see for revenue for revenue it has not happened full year was around 20 21000 let's round it off to 20000 just for simple math calculation okay 20000 millions ka half is what around 10000 millions okay so done revenue is almost up where is the problem problem is that if i'm talking about the so problem nahi it's it's surprising okay for for me when i when i started doing the analysis for me it was a surprise that okay revenue is half for 6 months fair enough but that it has already it's already like 150 times okay that that to only for half year ended so for that if if you any time space any uh, question like this then ideally what you should do is go back to basics uh, i checked out their rhp 
uh, this is the draft red, red herring prospectus though of course rhp has even nine months ended data but uh, you know while i was just checking this out uh, i had already downloaded it so it's okay uh, nine nine months mein zyada kuch aise farak nahi main point remains the same okay so i'll quickly take you to the main point as to why this has happened so nahi hai the okay one minute Mm. I think I've written. Yes, this might not be visible to you, so let me just increase the font size. I hope this is visible. If it is not, just trust me. Trust whatever figures I'm telling is correct. Okay. So if you see here, for March, okay, I'll just zoom in. I'll zoom in further. Okay. For March, you can see that revenue, as I mentioned, you remember these figures, twenty thousand to ten uh, thousand roughly. Okay, so these figures are matching, right? Where is the problem? Problem is with the profit figure. So if I take you back to my presentation, profit ka figure kya tha? Four ninety eight seven forty seven. Yes, this one, right? Four ninety eight seven forty seven. This is the profit. Okay. Now, where is the big change? If I'm talking about expenses. in expenses here you can see there is a minus figure okay now you might be wondering in expenses how come there is a minus figure and see this was plus 575 plus 575 millions in the previous uh column okay for the year ended 20 it was plus 575 million and here it is minus 553 million so it's almost causing an impact of 1000 million okay 100 crore ka farak idhar hi hai okay so when i try to check this that what is this minus 553 million this bas this basically changes in inventory okay now what do we mean by changes in inventory if you still want to check it it's, it's in note number 29 okay note number 29 i'll take you quickly directly there itself to save some time okay so this is note number 29 okay this says how we have calculated that figure it's nothing but opening stock minus closing stock Okay, this is same for finished goods, work in progress, and stock in trade. So, if I were to check this, right here, you can see. Um, all right, I'm just scrolling right now. Yes, this was the opening stock, two hundred twelve million. Three hundred ninety eight million is the closing stock. Okay, so that is why. A minus figure of one eighty five, so closing stock is higher than the opening stock. Same is the case. This was, I guess, finished products. This is work in progress, three seventy six. See, last uh, for the full year ended, it's in positive. So expenses are more. Okay, yah pe what has happened? Has the ex has some expense gone down terrifically? No, it's just that changes in inventory being negative. It has impacted the profitability in a positive way. Okay. For those who did not understand this part, it might be because you are not aware about what do we mean by analyzing P and L. For that, you need to know this: how to check out the interpretation for changes in inventory and all that. Okay, I've covered this entirely in my basics of uh, fundamental analysis course. So, if you have not yet checked out my course, then you can surely check out on my website rachnaranadi dot com. In that, I've taught how to interpret this data. Okay, just in case, just in case, if you did not understand anything. what i talked about in the last 2 3 minutes about this big jump then this sentence is very important for you from 498 million in entire year profit to 747 million in only half year nothing great has happened with the company it's not like or some terrific thing has happened and because of which the profitability has jumped it's all normal okay in fact it's just that their closing inventory is more than their opening inventory because of which it's a significant change okay itna to sab i think this this is clear so nothing amazing wow has happened with the company okay so i hope this point is clear next point i wanted to tell you one positive point is that debt equity ratio has been uh, continuously going down it was i guess around 0.4 it has gone down to almost 0.2 now okay now if you check out the valuation part for valuation you can see that their valuation is at 47 times pe multiple For Hudson Agro, it's 102.3. Uh, for Parag Milk, it is at 9.7. So, don't lie somewhere in between. So, comparatively, okay, she priced. If I'm talking about price to book value, I've taken this screenshot from Screener. For price to book value, it's at 5.49. Hudson is at 19.55. We can see here. Okay. 
Parang is at 1.51, but then, okay, so that is also not very highly priced. Okay, PB is also not highly priced. Uh, these are the important points as far as valuation is concerned. So in simple words, PE and PB both look fairly valued for me. Okay. Uh, one very important point I'm going to talk just in next one minute. Uh, before that, quick details about IPO. IPO is uh, of just 520 crore rupees. Okay, it's not a big one. Out of 520 crore rupees also, 50 crore is fresh issue. Okay, and 470 crore is like OFS. Okay, so it's as good as the promoters are just, you know, uh, liquidating uh, their investment in the company. So uh, is it something very great till here? So my answer is not like super great, nothing like that. Okay, now I want everyone's attention here. I'm just typing out Parag Milk Foods. Okay, let me share my screen again. I guess I would stop sharing. Share. Share, share screen. Okay, all right. Here we are now. What else is important for me, other than financial, something which is very important is how fast are their peers growing? Okay, so if you see uh, this one, this is Parag Milk, by the way. If you see here for Parag Milk stock price, at what at what CAGR has their stock price risen? For five years, it's minus 11%. Okay, Parag, which is their competitor. For three years, it's minus 26%. If this is not visible, let me just uh, zoom it in. And I hope now this is now very clearly visible. This is Parag. Again, I'm repeating Parag Milk, which is one of their peers. How much is the five-year growth for Parag Milk stock? It's minus 11%. For three years, minus 26%. For one year, it's my... Uh, for one year, it is 50%. Oh, flow, flow, may minus again. Okay, one year 50%, but then last year, you know, almost all stocks have gone up really well. But three years minus 26, five years minus 11%. Okay, now let me compare it with one more peer, which was, uh, we have compared it in Hudson Agro. Yes. Now, if I take you to Hudson Agro also, uh, let's check out how this stock has performed. Okay, three year CAGR is around 21%, five year CAGR 31%, 10 year CAGR around 40%. Has this done well? Yes, better than Parag Milk for sure. But then, if you remember, even for valuation wise also, Hudson Agro is way better as compared to. Uh, so I can say Parag Milk is here. Let me stop sharing the screen. Parag Milk, Hudson Agro, and somewhere in between is Dodla. Okay. So uh, please understand that why is the reason? What what is the actual reason that if I'm talking about a milk and milk product company, why is it that? Uh, something like a Parag Milk, why hasn't it performed really well? Why hasn't the stock price gone up very nicely? Understand one or two points. If I'm talking about milk industry, it is kind of uh, a regulated industry. Okay. If, if a company were to sell milk, they can't sell it like 100 rupees per liter. Okay. If, I mean, there are government norms for that, right? What is the maximum capped price for that government caps the prices so you're selling prices capped to some extent okay there are certain exceptions for this rule we are not going to go into that much detail but for majority of these uh, milk selling companies milk selling price of milk is capped okay so they have to play on the reduction of cost only so that is the reason why the profitability is never like wow especially in milk okay they might earn more revenue from milk products and you know other like I said, ghee, butter, curd, all that, they can earn a little bit more revenue, not from four milk. Okay. Profitability is comparatively low. So I hope you've understood this all in all. Let me just give you a quick recap. Uh, third highest milk production, uh, third highest milk procurement, uh, second highest milk uh, presence, uh, market presence, I can say, uh, but all amongst private players. South India, major presence. Financials, uh, revenue growth is not that bad, not at all. Profit growth, decent enough, but last... I hope you have understood six months growth. Nothing great has happened. It's just because of closing inventory. It has had a big impact on the profitability. Debt to equity, not bad. Valuation, okay -ish. Neither to uh, highly valued nor undervalued. Okay, -ish. Um IPO details, 520 crores IPO, hai, but out of that, 470 crores is OFS. So all in all, if you ask me, does this IPO really excite me? Answer is not really doesn't excite me a lot uh, even if I apply I might apply just from one or two accounts maybe
but of course i'll take the decision on the last day of uh, this uh, i mean last day of the subscription right this has opened up today for subscription so day after tomorrow is the last day but i don't think i'm going to apply for more than two uh, lots out of total five lots which i generally apply through various multiple accounts so uh, to be honest i don't expect like something like amazing returns even if it happens i think it it might be something like a listing gain but if you're talking about <clears throat> long term prospects i might not stay in in this company for a long term perspective obviously everyone knows this is my research this is my analysis this is my opinion if you want to take your decision it's your decision your analysis okay you have to take the final decision right this was the one which was going to take up a uh, maximum time if i talk about kims kims doesn't have a lot of information to be i mean nothing to explain as such information to utna hi hai but uh, if i'm talking about explanation point very few points to be explained number one kims is into obviously as the name suggests it's into hospitality business it's one of the largest in andhra pradesh and telangana okay very much concentrated business in andhra pradesh and telangana it has 2.2 times more beds than the second largest provider in andhra pradesh and telangana okay so this is something interesting so number 1 and number 2 there's a big gap okay this is 2.2 times more this has 2.2 times more beds as compared to the second largest provider in andhra pradesh and telangana uh, they have a flagship hospital which is 1000 beds at secunderabad uh, which is one of the largest private sector uh, pr private hospitals in india at a single location of course excluding medical colleges but then considering all these points that yes flagship hospital they have 1000 beds all that but kims secunderabad okay important point red alert point kims secunderabad and kims kondapur these two hospitals they contribute 64% of the total group revenue okay is it a big one yes it's a big revenue from a very so number one it's anyways concentrated only in andhra pradesh and telangana number two out of that also only two hospitals out of whatever hospitals they have two hospitals are contributing 64% of the total group revenue so is there a big concentration risk answer is yes according if you talk about revenue growth revenue growth is good uh, 20.4% cagr revenue growth ebitda growth is also good uh, 48% cagr uh, if i'm talking about pat it's it's a loss to profit transition okay so in 2019 they had a 488 millions ka loss okay and from that they have gone to 2054 millions profit you might be wondering uh, what might have happened i think one of the big reasons can be corona Uh, i have few friends in andhra pradesh telangana i also asked them i called them up and i asked them that was this also one of the covid centers as per whatever information i got from my friends they were saying that yes uh, this is uh, surely i mean this this hospital was also uh, a, a center for covid and maybe that is the reason why one of that might be one of the reasons why i'm not saying definitely i'm not saying the only reason but one of the reasons why it might have had good good occupancy might be one of the reasons why we can see uh the profit go, uh, going up uh but yes of course as i am again repeating not the only point uh, it's 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 an amazing uh, deal that the company has gone from losses to profits okay if i talk about the valuation uh, pv valuation looks cheap roe is better than peers and pv valuation is also cheap promoter holding is one area of concern for me the pre issue holding is also 46.81% post issue promoter holding is going down to only 38.84% pretty low promoter holding uh so not a good point if if you ask me my perspective again um post issue uh if i'm talking about this this is the holding i hope this is clear pre versus post whatever is the uh issue size more than 90% of the issue size is again offer for sale so is it like a big chunk of money is going to flow flow back to the hospital answer is no okay so again not happy with this point 90% is other it's it's ofs only so all in all hospital business is good but then there's a big concentration risk being present only in two states plus that flagship hospital uh, is good that's a positive point but again kim sikandrabad kim kondapur again having 64% of uh, the total group revenue uh, financials are positive with good growth rate in revenue ebitda uh, pat so it is from loss to profit valuations also not that bad uh but you know overall promoter holding is also less uh, more than 90% is ofs looking at the concentration risk overall i feel it is a little bit risky to invest so those who have surplus funds those who uh, i mean if i i were having 
uh, surplus funds, if I am having a risk taking cap uh, capacity, I would have invested. But right now, given a choice, I don't think I'm I'm going to invest in this IPO. Uh, so I would I would just uh, give a pass from my side. Uh, I might not invest in this IPO. So all in all, those who joined in late uh, and those who are the people who care a lot about the viewers who might waste their precious time for them, you know, there there are people who will say that, Are uh, main point is here. Is Rashna going to apply or not? So this is the point. Number one is that Acha, ha, Rohit Kamle is saying hit likes every time I have to remember. A remind, I mean. Okay. But anyways, uh, if you if you can just smash that like button, it's just 920 likes. Smash it, take it to take it to at least 4,000. 4,000 people are watching it right now. Take it to 4,000 if you can. <clears throat> okay. Chalo. So going back, uh, uh, if I'm talking about Kim's, am I going to apply? My answer is no. If I'm talking about Dodla, maybe just one or two on five, but not more than that. Okay. So I hope you have understood my view on both these IPOs. Uh, so Printax Pro says, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, Anupam Das says, hello, ma'am. How are you? Should I hold NCC? Buru? All right, today we are not talking about stocks and news. So tomorrow, Anupam. Okay, uh, views on Josh Kopran again tomorrow. No, no stock specific today. Uh, Raj Bhatia is saying, man, I have shown my hand. What a thing. Very good. So uh, anyways, I hope you have understood uh, about my view on both these IPOs. Uh, let's not take this uh, live stream very long. Uh, people love it if it is short and sweet. I hope you have understood my views on both these IPOs. Uh, you can take your decision wisely. Uh, and then only take your decision. Okay. Gaurav ji and Rukwit stock related uh, new discussions will happen tomorrow in our stocks in news. Uh, right. Uh, Abhishek again says, Dilnaz ne bol diya no. To bas no. <laughs> Abhishek. Okay. Chalo. That's it from my side guys. Take care. Jai Hind and bye bye.